In today's video, we're going to talk about the importance that integrations have on your purchase decisions. In other words, when we're talking about purchase decisions, we're talking about the systems that you use to build your environment. And that includes everything from your website to your sales engine, to how you get people to your product or service and how you're going to deliver that. And I'm going to show you an example of what uh, I've just gone through recently with making a change. And that way, I hope it helps you get an idea of why some products and services may be better for you based upon how they integrate with other products and services rather than just the price or certain other criteria. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look. So everything I'm talking about here is basically because I have courses. I've got a new course out and I also have a membership, which I launched earlier this year. So I need to be able to set all of that up. So let me show you what I'm talking about as far as where my courses are. So this is Suburbia Press homepage and you can see right at the top, there's a link to get the course or to join the membership. We'll take a look at that in a moment. And I've also got a free guide. So if you just want to see about the uh, top 10 questions about a high converting website, go here and it'll take you to this page and you can get the uh, free guide. Just subscribe and confirm it. You'll get an email to confirm and then it'll just download right away. But let me go back over here. And so we talk about different plans that I have. So choose your plan. There is a course, which is Website Conversion Academy. And I talk about, you know, what it is, who is it for, how much does it cost? And then the same thing with a membership. Now, a membership, of course, has two different plans. You could do it monthly or you could do it for an annual plan, which saves you a two months fee. But I've also got, for a limited time anyways, I've got a bonus where I bring the two of them together. So for the price of an annual plan on the membership, not only do you get the membership for a year with two months off, but you also get the Website Conversion Academy in here added on as just a bonus for buying the membership. So that gives you 52 lessons that are with the course, plus all the support and mentoring that goes along with the membership. So let me just quickly take you up here and we'll talk about the course first. So there is a page that just lets you know all about it, who it's for, what's inside of it, and the things that you need to understand, whether you're just beginning in business or maybe you do have a website, but you're not getting the sales and conversions that you want. There is a lot of information in here on marketing and also a lot on building a WordPress website. And if you want to know exactly what that is, well, I list all of the different training lessons in each module. There are five modules. So you can come through here and you can take a look and you can see exactly what you get for having gone through the course. And I've got module four, which is where the, you know, the assemble your website. This is the technical part of building a WordPress website. I break it down step by step. So if you've never hosted a website before, if you've never built a WordPress website, this shows you exactly what to do and how to do it. And then this last part is about getting the conversion. So you've built everything, you've got it in place, and now you want to drive traffic to it. So we've got lessons over here that are about, you know, how are you going to drive traffic? There's a four different methods I talk about. Creating a lead magnet, which we talked about in an earlier lesson, how to post it, how to deliver it creating a marketing funnel. And then once you got people on your email list, how do you write your emails? And of course, testing your systems just to make sure everything works before you launch it and go live. We've got a community, we've got a seven day free trial, and there's a uh, live call in the community once a month. So as you can see, it's 497, you get a few different things in here. And that's just the course. However, if you like the idea of the course, but also like the idea of the course with some support, I've got this membership, it's called Headway Plus, and that is to help you keep making progress. So maybe after you've taken the course, then you wanna go in here, there are additional lessons that expand upon things that we talked about in the course, because you can only fit so much in a course. Also, we do member calls twice a month, so you can ask questions and we can get other discussions going in there as well. Maybe there's a hot seat where somebody shows their site, what they've done, and we kind of go through step-by-step step to see how it conforms to what we've been teaching. And then this comes down and tells you everything that you need to know about the membership and what happens 
inside. Now we have a thing called Core Content, which is a smaller version of Website Conversion Academy. It doesn't have the demonstrations and the specific lessons, but it goes over the concept. So if you only join monthly, you still get that information. And if you join on the annual plan, then you get a year of the membership with the mentoring, the calls, and so forth. But you also get the Website Conversion Academy course included. And like I said, this is a limited time. I don't know when it's going to end yet. Right now, this is a launch offer because I just launched the course and the membership a little while before. I thought, you know, wouldn't it be interesting if we put the two of these together and see how that works? I don't think it's going to stay that way. But for right now, there's the opportunity if you decide to go ahead and buy the annual membership, you get everything that you would have gotten for the same price, plus Website Conversion Academy as a bonus offer added inside. So that is what this is all about, is setting things up so that when people make a purchase, either for the course or the membership, and for the membership, whether it's monthly or annual, that I can quickly and easily provision them with what they need. All right, so here is um, the webpage for Searchy. This is the tool that I use to create and sell my, basically my courses and my membership. All of that's based on the Searchy platform. It builds a web interface. I put a domain on it and people can get access. They get delivery. And the nice part about that, having it on a robust platform, is that if something happens to my website or something else, the people who are signed up and subscribed here still get access because it keeps on going. And that's kind of the same thing about some other external services versus putting everything on WordPress. So the way I get people into that is first, I have a sales page on Suburbia Press. And then that takes them over to Thrivecart, which is a shopping cart system. A shopping cart is different than a payment provider. So a payment provider like Stripe, all it does is say, here's your product, here's the price, go ahead and do it. Something like Thrivecart or Surecart or Gumroad or Cartran, any number of these shopping cart systems, they'll give you options. And we'll take a look at this a little bit later on, but the options are to make more than one sale. You can have an entire funnel that maybe gives a bump order, which is like a small add-on to what they just bought. You can also give them upsell opportunities, maybe to buy something that's a little bit more expensive or downsells. If you think that there's a low chance they're gonna buy the product at all, maybe you can sell them something less expensive but will do most of what they wanna do. So that's what a shopping cart does for you. So here's the problem I had. Up until recently, Searchy did almost all of its integration through a tool called Zapier. Zapier is the 800 pound gorilla of online integration services. There are other things out there. Uh, Integrately, I think is one of them. Maybe they've changed their name, I can't recall. But basically what it does is it allows applications like Searchy to create different little systems that integrate with Zapier. When enough of those systems are, are there, you get a large combination of things that can integrate with each other. I think there's over 3,000 possible applications that can integrate with Zapier, which means that they can integrate with each other. So in other words, to get a sale from Thrivecart and get that information into Searchy, I had to use Zapier, which is an additional cost. And it's also occasionally has some problems and you can see from the plans here, they do have a free plan. It doesn't do much, but I ended up having to use a professional plan, which at $49 a month, it did a few things for me. One of them was that, you know, you ha obviously you get more zaps, which are more integrations you needed to. Sometimes you have to get premium apps, which I did for Searchy because of the way that they use webhooks. And it just simply was an additional expense to get somebody from my shopping cart system and get them loaded automatically into Searchy. Fortunately, something else came along. There is now an integration between Searchy and ConvertKit, but I wasn't using ConvertKit. I was using this tool called Fluent CRM. It's a WordPress plugin. Now, I like Fluent CRM very much. I'm not afraid at all to recommend it. But I will say that it is kind of lax on integrations. If we look down here, a lot of the integrations that it has are with other WordPress plugins. It doesn't really integrate very well with tools that are 
served like um, like search is, for example, on a software as a service. So if I continue to use Fluent CRM, and as I said, I've been very happy with it, well, then that means that I have to continue to use Zapier. I made the decision to switch over to ConvertKit, and that allowed me to continue sending my emails, of course. I had to migrate my subscribers over. But the integration between Thrivecart to ConvertKit and from ConvertKit to Searchy is why I ultimately made that change. So let me go ahead and I'm going to show you what that looks like. All right, so we're inside of my Searchy dashboard, and you can see that we have an area with apps. That's this little icon down here. And there's one for ConvertKit. They have other integrations. The ones with the green check mark are the ones that I have turned on. And for the most part, it handles what I need to do. So I can obviously integrate with Zapier, which was their primary way of getting integration with other applications. They had a lot of demand for an integration with ConvertKit, and they created that. So if I click on this, you can basically add your account. And I won't go through the details of showing that. And I can click on here and you see where I've got different automations based upon information coming from ConvertKit. And I'm kind of showing you this in reverse order. So let me just make a little uh, new automation here. I'll just call this one demo. And here's what happens. If this happens in ConvertKit, so if a tag is added to a subscriber, a tag is removed or a subscriber adds to a form. So in this case, we're gonna choose a tag. And then you can select the tag. So I can give access, you know, this is the way I've named my tags for this, to my membership and also to the hub. The To me, the two are different. Access to the hub is one action inside of Searchy. Access to the membership is a different action inside of Searchy. So I've got those two over there. And I've also kind of shown, did people subscribe as an annual subscriber for the membership or a monthly subscriber? I do that because I give a little bit more to annual subscribers, so that way they've got a tag that indicates them. So let's just say that we get access to the hub, and then you can add the subscriber to a hub, or you can add an audience tag. You can also remove people. So the audience tag is how you do segments inside of Searchy. The hub is giving them access to the website itself, and once inside, then they may require a audience tag that gives them access to something else. So I mentioned annual subscribers get an extra course. I, that's why I have both of these set up. I add them to the hub because they have to be there. And then I add them to an audience tag so that they can get the appropriate courses or lessons that they need inside of the membership. Okay, so once I've done this, so as, if this happens in ConvertKit, select this tag and I'm going to add them to a subscriber, then do this in Searchy. So I want to add the subscriber to a hub, Then I have to check which hub, and it's going to be this membership site, which you see right down here. And you can also send them a welcome email. So we can go ahead and click Confirm. And this one's turned off right now since I already have that set up, so I'm not going to go ahead and activate that. So here's what happens in Thrivecart before we even get to ConvertKit. I wanted to show you kind of why this is important to me in Searchy. It's very simple and very easy to build the automations based upon tags that go into ConvertKit. The question is, how do those tags get into ConvertKit? Well, over here with Thrivecart, you see that we have a number of integrations. This is my ConvertKit integration, and I've got my payment providers. And also down below, I've got integration with Slack and also with Zapier. What I can do from here is go to some products. Let's look at the membership. So we come over here and we look at behavior. At the end of all this stuff, you can make these different rules. So I've got notices that'll go to Slack, but if somebody makes a purchase, I can add them to ConvertKit. So let's edit this to take a quick look. If the main product is purchased, well, that's only one of the options. I've got all of these other options. If the product is refunded, a cart's abandoned, payments decline. If it's a subscription like the membership is, then when a recurring payment is made or if it fails, when something is, a payment is upcoming, you can send them a notice. Basically, you can take an action based on any of those criteria. And then you have this one for any of your pricing options or for a specific pricing option. If I check this, then I can choose whether it's the monthly recurring or the annual payment. So that lets me send different tags. 
So I'm going to bring this back so I don't save this. So basically, I'm going to use ConvertKit. I've got a couple of other integrations here. The I can do custom HTML, which I don't, or I can set a notice to Slack. Before that would have been something done in Zapier. So basically, I can add them or remove them from an existing tag or from a sequence. And this is the tag that I'm adding. And there's all sorts of different messages that you can send, different actions you can take. But this is why I can now avoid Zapier and the cost for Zapier by doing this direct integration between Thrivecart to ConvertKit and from ConvertKit to Searchy. So let's go ahead and take a look at ConvertKit. Under the subscriber page, you have tags. You also have products if you were selling things through uh, ConvertKit Commerce. But these tags are over here. So when I sell something in Thrivecart, that integration comes over to ConvertKit and creates these tags, as we just saw. From there, once this is in, the subscribers added, I come over to Searchy, and these automations happen and add them in there. And then that's done. It automatically adds my subscriber or my new membership member, and they get access to what they need. Very simple. The problem with Zapier, I have found, is that most of the time it works. Sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes it breaks down. Very recently, Searchy updated the code on its side for Zapier, and there were some folks in the support area complaining that all of their zaps stopped working. Of course, Searchy supports it. Well, that shouldn't have happened. But you know what? That's what happens with development. Sometimes things break down. If you make a change one place, it may have an unexpected change someplace else that is adverse. And that seems to be what happened with Searchy and Zapier. So people are complaining they have to go back and redo all their zaps, which means that sales came in for them. Zapier was supposed to connect them, and they have a bunch of upset customers because the integration didn't work. And that's my concern with Zapier, is that most of the time it does work. It is a bit convoluted to go through and create the different zaps that you need in order to connect something. There's a lot more steps than there are in what we just saw over here on the Searchy automation page. But three steps in a row from Thrivecart to ConvertKit and from ConvertKit to Searchy, I have automatic provisioning when somebody buys a course or joins the membership, then they're set up. I don't have to do a thing. It happens automatically. And it doesn't cost me an extra nearly $600 a year to use Zapier. The difference was going from Fluent CRM, which was a WordPress plugin that did not integrate. That's why I had to use Zapier. To ConvertKit cost me a little bit of money. I decided, I mean, you have a um, free plan available on ConvertKit for 1,000 subscribers. But if you've got more than that, obviously, you're going to pay. And there are some things that the free plan doesn't give you. So I went ahead and I bought the Creator Pro plan. And for the amount of folks I have right now, I think that was a few hundred bucks. So as I, don't, I don't remember exactly. You could take a look and measure the size of your audience. But it was less than the amount that I would spend on Zapier. It would perform the service that I'm getting with Fluent CRM. And quite honestly, it's been a while. It's been a number of years since I used ConvertKit. I used it before I ever got to Fluent CRM. Now that I've come back, they have really improved the product. I'm very happy and pleased with it. And it does some things that Fluent CRM doesn't do or it does them differently. So for example, if I look at sequences inside of Fluent CRM, each one has to be separated by a number of days since the sequence started. So if I wanted something to go out weekly, this sequence email goes out seven days later. The next one goes out 14 days later. And as you add messages, you keep having to do the math of like how many days later. Well, with ConvertKit, it's a little bit different. It is how many days since the previous email. And that means that you can easily reorder things. You imagine if I tried to reorder something and had to do that math all over again for all of the sequences. It's not impossible, but it's inconvenient. With ConvertKit, all I have to do is kind of drag and drop the sequence, and it will have a setting per individual email. Let me see if I can show you that. All right, so we're inside one of our sequences, and you can see where it says, send this email, and you can choose when it goes. So I want it to go immediately when somebody subscribes, and this is after the last email. If I come down to the next one, 
I want this one to go one day later. And then after that, I'm doing seven days apart, only on Tuesdays. And I'll continue to build this sequence out since I just moved it over. I haven't got all the messages in. But that is a lot more convenient. And you see these little handles, you could drag and drop, you know, things and reorder them if you want to. It's very easy to work with. And Fluent CRM, I, I do really enjoy it. I like it. I've used it for years, but it was a bit more difficult to do that. And it didn't have the same integrations. And that's why I'm with ConvertKit now is because the integration that it has with Searchy. It was that important to me to have that automatic provisioning without using Zapier that I was willing to change my entire email system. And I can tell you that changing your email system is a real pain in the neck. So it's not something that I want to do on a regular basis. I'm very happy now with ConvertKit and I plan on staying here just as I planned on staying with Fluent CRM. So you never know what's going to come on. But it was that one integration with a tool that where I sell my products or host the products that I sell and also my shopping cart that made all the difference in the world. And that's why it was worth going through the hassle of migrating from Fluent CRM to ConvertKit because it just made my integrations so much easier. It made my overall service better. When somebody signed up while I was still on Fluent CRM, I had to go manually create their account. And that's not a good look. Like when you say, okay, we'll send you an email when your account is created. It means if I'm on vacation someplace, I've always got to have a laptop with me. I've always got to be checking in. Now, the automatic provisioning compared to trusting Zapier, which could have done the automatic provisioning, is so much easier, so much smoother, so much faster. When somebody signs up and pays, it might take 30 seconds or so for it to process, and then they've got their access. They can sign in, and they can get to what they paid for. That is the important thing, and that is why it was worth going through all the hassle. All right, I hope this has been helpful or gives you some ideas about why you should look at integrations between your various systems, how they work, and just how important they really are. Thank you so much. I'll see you again next week.